Hey everyone, it's Pastor Brett Strohecker here at New Beginnings Church of Middletown, Pennsylvania. I want to thank you for joining me once again for another segment on Closer to God. And today we're going to be looking at Mark chapter 2, verses 23 to 28, which takes us to the end of the chapter. And this is a discussion about the Sabbath. So let me read this for you here. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was walking through some grain fields, his disciples began breaking off heads of wheat. But the Pharisees said to Jesus, they shouldn't be doing that. It's against the law to work by harvesting grain on the Sabbath. Wow, big harvest there, huh? Anyway, but Jesus replied, haven't you read in the scriptures what King David did when he and his companions were hungry? He went into the house of God during the days when Ab Abiathar, I knew I was going to stumble over that. Abiathar, let me say it again, Abiathar. Uh, was high priest, ate the special bread reserved for the priests alone, and then gave some to his companions. That was breaking the law too. Then he said to them, the Sabbath was made to benefit people. Remember that. The Sabbath, the Sabbath was made to benefit people. You know what? I'm stumbling, bumbling here. I can correct that by taking a sip of some magical Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Yes, and I said coffee, not donuts. I'm a diabetic for crying out loud. So, Doc, I'm listening. Anyway, getting back to this. The Sabbath was made to benefit people and not people to benefit the Sabbath. And I, the Son of Man, am master even of the Sabbath. So right away, we have Pharisees that are jealous of Jesus. Why? Because he's very popular in his teaching. And they feel that he's stealing a lot of their thunder. That... He's kind of taken away from their station, their place of authority, their place of prominence in the Jewish culture. So they're worried, why is this guy out there drawing all these crowds and being so popular? So they're looking for ways to bring him down. They're looking for ways to discredit him. They're looking for ways to try to make the people dislike him. Boy, does that sound familiar? I don't know. I think I saw something in the news about that. But anyway, um, here they are, and they're walking through a, a wheat field, basically. And they're breaking off heads to eat wheat and eating it. And that in itself is not against the law. But the Pharisees are saying, look, 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 they're harvesting grain on the Sabbath. Well, let's think about this. Do a couple of heads of wheat justify that someone's harvesting them? Yeah, they're harvesting them on an individual basis, but it's not like it's out there that they're out there working an eight-hour shift that brings some crop in. So, you know, it should, I better take another sip because I'm still kind of stumbling, bumbling here. And I don't want to stumble and bumble because this is good stuff and it's important stuff. Anyway, um... Boy, not only is Dunkin' Donuts getting a plug, so is Regal Aviation. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just one of those boots today, folks. Uh, you know, they're not really doing anything that would not bring pleasure to God. And they're not being rebellious towards God. And Jesus points this out to them. He says, look, the Sabbath was made to benefit people and not people to benefit the Sabbath. You know, what What does what brings God pleasure on the Sabbath day? Well, that is a day that we should set aside to rest from our normal routine. Rest from our work routine, our school routine, or whatever routine we have going on in our life. It's a time to settle down and take a moment to have the important things be our focus for that one day. And what's important? Our love for God and the love for our family. Those should be our two priorities in the order of priority in our lives. The Sabbath was made for us to show our appreciation to God. The Sabbath was made for us to rest and give thanks to the Lord for helping us through a busy week, for helping us with our daily routine. The Sabbath was made for us 
to reflect upon the things that God is doing in our life so that we can enhance and deepen our relationship with him and draw closer to him. And that's what's important here. And Jesus is saying, that's why God set aside the Sabbath. So you would have a moment to rest. It's not like he said, don't eat on the Sabbath. Don't drink on the Sabbath. Don't do anything on the Sabbath. But yet here are these guys following Jesus around being legalistic and saying, ah, 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 you're breaking the rules. You can't be such a great prophet or a great man of God if you can't follow his rules and obey his rules. Well, first of all, they are misinterpreting those rules. That's why Jesus is pointing that out. You know what? People are not to benefit the Sabbath. In other words, we're not to engage in, in you know, limiting ourselves or restricting ourselves to following some rules on the Sabbath. Instead, we are to just relax. Take a moment. You know, breathe. Reach out. Touch the walls. Find out what's going on in our personal life. Uh, spend some time with God. Renew and refresh our relationship with him or rehash the experiences that we've had with him through the week. You know, Sunday is what most people call could, would consider the Sabbath. And I'm sure that many of you can remember when we had the blue laws there, nothing was open on Sunday. And, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing bad about that. And they serve their purpose in their time. But, you know, people think that Sunday is you get up, you go to Sunday school and church if you go, um, and then the rest of the day is yours to do with whatever you want. Well, it's more than that because so many people come to church and they say, okay, we know the order of worship, so this is how we do it. And it gets so regimented. And I'm telling you, I, I, I for one, as a pastor, don't like that because – Sunday to me is a time where we do need to get together in God's house and worship him and give him honor and respect and learn about him and get into his word and pray and all that, but not in a regimented fashion just so we can check it off some checklist. I mean, I, I remember as a kid, uh, and if there's some former pastors out there that used to be the pastor of the church uh, where I attended with my family, let me issue an apology up front before I say this, but as a kid, I wasn't really engaged in the service like I should be, and I uh, probably just reduced the service to, I had the bulletin in hand, and they had those little visitor cards, and you'd take the pencil and fill out the card if you're a visitor, uh, if you were a brave soul and knew what you were getting yourself into. <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but uh, anyway, I used to take the pencil, and as each part of the service would be done, I would check it off. And to me, the service is like, good, we're one step closer to the end. We're one step closer to the end. Uh-oh, this next part usually is a long part. So let me think, what can I do during this long part? Oh, yeah, that's right. Count the tubes on the pipe organ. Count the pipes. You know, here, I'm, I'm giving away a lot of secrets here. Again, former pastors of mine, I apologize. I should have been paying attention, um, but... Back in those days, I wasn't as close to God as I am right now in my life. But So I would spend the service checking things off or counting organ pipes or rehashing my favorite Kansas songs in my head. Um, much to the point where I started tapping on stuff or, or started moving around or maybe started uh, tapping my foot or something like that. And my mom would be nudging me, like, what are you doing? Or looking at me like, what are you doing? Stop that. Uh, especially being a drummer, people get annoyed when we start drumming on stuff. You know, they, they, it's always that little the hand trick where you're drumming, drumming, drumming. They just say, stop, please. You are annoying me. You know, so this is the kind of stuff that Jesus is talking about. Let's not be so formal. Let's not be so legalistic. Because you know what? Those are stereotypes of God and Jesus at the time was trying to break those stereotypes you know God is not some judge sitting up in heaven waiting to press the button to zap you with a lightning bolt because you're a screw-up and he's not legalistic where he's keeping lists okay you know he doesn't have windows 
and he doesn't have Microsoft Excel. So he doesn't have a spreadsheet where he's waiting and waiting and waiting and has a list of sins in one column and is just waiting to check them off or put something in the box on that Excel spreadsheet every time we screw up. He's not that kind of God. So, you know, the Pharisees here are saying, oh, oh, you can't be a man of God because you're not listening to his commands. And Jesus is like, we are listening to his commands because we're taking it easy. It doesn't say that Jesus was ministering to the people here, does it? No. So what does that mean? He was taking a moment to appreciate what God has provided him, even in the form of these crops. He was taking a moment to appreciate what God was doing in his ministry. He was giving his uh, disciples some downtime because they're constantly dealing with people. But yet even in their downtime, they have... The Pharisees following them around like paparazzi. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it seems ridiculous. These guys had him under a microscope and they were just waiting for him to make a mistake so they could point it out for all the world to see. And we see that even today where people have some sort of gripe or complaint against a manager or, an, or another employee or uh, somebody that they dislike. They're just waiting for that person to screw up so they can say, aha, see, they are a terrible person. Now, I want to tell you why, because I'm keeping track and I'm seeing what they're doing and I'm telling you that they're a dirtbag. You know, people do that all the time with, amongst themselves, with politicians, obviously, uh, with um uh, people in leadership roles or people like pastors or people that are, you know, Christians. Christians even are criticized, criticized by non-Christians saying, oh, you guys are such hypocrites. The, you know, you're supposedly supposed to be doing this, but we see you doing this. So you can't even follow your own religion. Well, hold on, hold on. You are taking a legalistic reproach at that point. And if one of your excuses is that one of the reasons why you refuse to follow Christ is because you feel he's too legalistic or it's going to put severe limitations or restrictions on your life, then you are absolutely off the mark. You really don't know who Jesus is. That's why you should take a chance and take a moment to get to know him. And that's what the Sabbath was made for. Take some time out. Look at the important things in your life and decide, am I appreciative of the people that love me? Am I appreciative of the things that the Lord has provided for me? Am I working on getting closer to God and, and getting my relationship, be, becoming closer to him and in my relationship with him? That's what the Sabbath is all about. Not, okay, it's Sunday, so here are the things that we cannot do on Sunday. Oh my gosh. Even I couldn't live like that, and I'm a pastor for crying out loud. You know, don't make assumptions. And don't jump to conclusions. And especially, don't allow people that have that controlling nature within them that all they want you to do is march to their drum or dance to their tune. Controlling people um, are very, very detrimental and very, very negative on their influence in the world. So don't be one of them. And if you know one of them, pray for them. But don't allow them to manipulate you. Don't let anyone or anything squelch your passion for God or your passion for anything in this life. Be who God made you to be, not what the world tells you to be. And don't go around trying to satisfy the wants, the whims, and the desires of the world. It is better to satisfy the Lord than the whims of humans. Bible tells us that. That's my paraphrase of it, though. But if you look right in the very, 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 very center of the Bible, and it's uh, Psalm 119, I think it's verse 8, somewhere around there. I'm not a good chapter and verse guy, but I can tell you that what I know is in the Bible. I just can't give you pinpoint. You know, it's like, I know where something's at on the map, but I can't give you the latitude and longitude of where exactly that place is. So, you know, same difference. But it's better to please God than to try to run around and please people.
So that's what all of Jesus is telling the Pharisees. You know, instead of being critics, why don't you help out? Why don't you help out and get in the news about God and bringing people to him instead of lording over them? And I'm telling you, if you're in a church where people are lording over you, leave. Leave. Find a spiritual home that will feed you with the word of God. And always remember, nothing in this world is more important than the love of Jesus Christ. Tomorrow, we'll get into chapter 3. Wow, we're just moving right along here, aren't we? Only two chapters into Mark. And I know I've had some downtime, but trying to work on being a little more consistent in putting these out. So apologies for the downtime because there's a lot of things that come up unexpectedly, you know, uh, and you have to take care of them in a responsible way. But a lot of times when we do that, we become inconsistent in some other areas. And this is one where I became inconsistent. I want to be more consistent because I enjoy sharing the word of God with all of you. And I'm glad to see that many of you are taking the time to listen. And uh, I hope you're getting something out of it. Please let me know. Send me a line sometime, uh, as some people have, because it's reassuring to me that uh, I'm doing something good for the Lord. I'm not doing this for me, and I'm not doing this for the church. I'm doing this for the Lord, um, and the Lord wants me to do it for you. Uh, and why? Because he loves you very, very much. That much I do know without a doubt.